You like my shirt? This shirt has been through so much. It's got so many patches and I don't know. I feel like it's like molded to my body because I wear it so much. This makes no sense. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Money Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today I bring you my June wrap up. And in June, I believe I read 13 books, but I don't remember. Let me go. <laughs> yes, in June I read 13 books, which you can see is a kind of a big dip from the 20 books that I have been reading consistently. But let me tell you, it's only going to get worse from here until about October. I hate reading when it's hot and I just also i just started back up with work and it's been a mess so really um don't expect a lot of reading from me in the coming months but for now let's talk about june the first book i read in june i have talked about so much on this channel that i just i'm gonna show it to you and that's gonna be it but i read born by jeff vandermeer this is my favorite book of the year I fucking love this book. Five out of five stars. I don't know what else you want from me. You've, you've seen videos about this book over and over and over again. So I'm just gonna show you the pretty cover. Look at that beautiful cover. I love it. Look at that. Oh, I love I love everything about this. I love the, the writing down here. And just, ah, oh, I love this book. I love it. Five out of five stars. Done with that one. Next up, I read White Fragility by Bianca D'Angelo. I always say Bianca D'Angelo by Robin D'Angelo. Um, there was a lot of controversy about this book and I really don't want to get too much into it. But I will say that I did appreciate this book for one thing that is very important to me and it talks about people who are of mixed race. I feel like a lot of books kind of put this divide between white, black, and then Latino. And what is it Latino? Because in Latino culture, Latinx culture, we have a lot of people that are like me, white passing, but then we have Afro Latinx people. And it's like, I appreciated that Robin D'Angelo talked about what it's like to be mixed race and where we fall in this place of the, the 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 like racial divide so i appreciate it for that i don't want to talk too much about it because too much controversy and really i just i want to say the good things i got out of the book and that was one of the good things i got out of the book i also got a lot of uh talks with my husband about race my husband is a white man from spain Sometimes I have to call him out on these things and the good thing is he's very receptive and stuff like that But yeah, that's the book that I read. The next book that I read is Do You Dream of Tara 2 by Tammy O. What I, I can't how, Are you tired of hearing about this book yet? Because this is like Jeff Vandermeer's Born This is my second favorite book of the year or like my third favorite book of the year I don't remember where I put it. So I put it like in either yeah, it's, I think it's Born, uh, Dune, and then this one. So, yeah, this book is about a bunch of astronauts that are chosen when they are about 13 years old to, to go to through some rigorous training out of like thousands, six get chosen to go to space. And it's about what you're willing to sacrifice in order to achieve something that might not even be achievable. I love this book, gave it five out of five stars. Please read this book, it's so, so good. It's by a black author writing science fiction, which, yes, yes, I love this book so much. I would uh, read it again. In fact, I kinda wanna read it again, but I gotta get through the Mistborn trilogy this month. So, we can't do that. As you know, this month was my month of finishing a uh, series that I have opened. So I also read Network Effect by Martha Wells, which is the first full-length novel in the Murderbot series. And we're gonna get another one because Martha Wells just wants me to keep reading. And I will keep reading because I really, really loved this book. I gave it five out of five stars. I love, I love Murderbot so much. I love that they are like the stereotypical, I don't care that you feel, but really please feel love for me. 
<laughs> you know? I like it. I like his interaction with humans. I like how he, how, I'm sorry, I keep calling it a he. In my mind, it's a he. I'm sorry. I know that uh, it, uh, their sex is never uh, described, but I call them he. But anyway, uh, I don't want to give anything away, but this brings back original characters from the very first book. And we talk more about what Murderbot is doing. And also it brings back one of my like favorite characters from the other novels. I just, I loved everything about this book. Just everything about it. I'm a little bit confused at times, but that tends to happen with the with this series for me. Like sometimes I'm like, why are you on this planet? What are you doing? And then, you know... And then I get into the story and I love it. So, props. I loved it. It was great. And then after that, I took the plunge. This was like 13 euros usually on Amazon and it dropped down to eight and I bought it. And that is A Natural History of Dragons, a memoir by Lady Trent. And this is the uh, Memoirs of Lady Trent trilogy, not trilogy, series. And guys, I am in love with this series already. I'm sorry, I'm looking because there's beautiful drawings in here and I want to show you one, but of course I'm never going to find one. There, they, it has like her sketches. And if you don't know what this is about, this is basically like historical fiction in the world where dragons exist and they are alive and they're, you know, uh, creatures that need to be studied. Kind of like spying on whales, but dragons and it's about this woman who wants to study them but of course turn of the century we are not on good you know we, we don't want women scientists and she really wants to be one and the love story in here is great and here's the thing that i really like about this she doesn't put down other women for not wanting to pursue academic pursuits she thinks they're great she thinks that it's fine she just wants to pursue her academic pursuits and have that be her life and I really really appreciated that and it gets more into that in the second book uh, which I am reading now this month which is, which is July and I'm so I'm so happy with these books also uh, this one is like in cold weather but the next one is a tropic of serpents which is in hot weather but anyway we're talking about this one I gave this five out of five stars I love it I think this is gonna make my best series of the year it's, it's great. I'm, I'm having a great time with this series. I, I, I really, I love the character of um, uh, Lady Trent. She is so, so amazing. Oh, and the book is told from the perspective of her as an older woman. Like she's writing this when she's old. And you know how old people just stop giving a fuck what you think? That's her. I loved it. I loved every second of reading that book. And then next after that, I picked up Mama's Last Hug by Franz the Wall. This is a non-fiction story telling us that it basically is just a, a, a way to explain how um, animals sh show emotion and how it's ridiculous to, to think that animals don't have emotions. And that is fucking ridiculous and I still can't believe this is something that is debated in the scientific community, but it is. And this book talks a lot about that it, and it's it's really beautiful. I really recommend it if you love animals. Um, it, it doesn't sugarcoat anything for you and it really, and it's not also, it doesn't pander to your emotions like i know mama's last hug sounds like something that is going to be like so dramatic and so hard and so difficult but in reality it's a lot less emotional and a lot more scientific so i really appreciated about that about this and by the way mama is actually a chint and uh ch she gives her last dying hug to uh a, a caretaker and in the beginning of the book, they explain anybody that goes into a chimp cage is just a suicidal, basically, because chimps are really, really aggressive animals. But they have emotions and they show emotions and they show how there's camaraderie between animals and not just between the same species, but different species. And it's great. And it, it also talks about how we would never think like we would never for 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 pet owners we know our pets have emotions but when we talk about wild animals there's like a separation there so it's really interesting if you're interested in uh um natural history kind of stuff like that 
uh, of animals, I would really, really recommend this book. It was great. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read Binti Home. And Binti Home follows from where Binti left off. And this time it's Binti going home and dealing with the consequences of her having left home in the first place. Not only that, but she has to bring Okwo with her. And it's kind of a shit show because she basically went against everything her people are supposed to do she went against her own customs her own like upbringing and it's it's very realistic at least for me as a latin american woman to go against everything you've ever been taught and then go home and not find and find this like like lukewarm welcome of we're glad you're home but you also kind of fucked up you know I really, really liked it. I liked Binti as a character. I liked the introduction. I believe it's in this one. Yes, it's in this one when we have the desert people and how they explain how there is even like the darker you are in this world, in reality, it's like they see you as less, like the lighter you are, it's better. And it, it, it just, it's such a beautiful beautiful story i i really loved it and the end of it was great i really love it i'm trying not to give spoilers because of course this is the second book in a series so i'm trying not to give spoilers but i absolutely loved binti home which makes what i'm about to say really really difficult the next book i read was binti the night masquerade and I gave that book two stars. Oh, I gave Vimti Home five stars. And I gave The Night Masquerade two stars. I absolutely hated that book. That book is about 200 pages long and it took me five days to read because I hated it so much. It has my least favorite trope of all time twice. There are no stakes. There is Deus Ex Machina all over the place. There is no real resolution, which I think you could argue that because like racism has no resolution in real life, this is a way of explaining how no matter how much you try and how much things say that they're going to change, they don't really change. But it just felt rushed and I was bored. I was bored throughout it and I was really disappointed with the end very disappointed like i saw the twist coming and then when the end was supposed to happen i said i had an idea of what like the end should be because of some foreshadowing that had happened before and then when the end happened when like it actually happened i was like this is the biggest cop out since the Raven King that I have ever seen. And I just don't want to talk about it anymore because I'm really sad that I didn't like it because I really wanted to like it. I really wanted the Binti trilogy to be like one of my top series that I've read this year. And it was so bad for me that I actually gifted the book to somebody else that I think would enjoy it. Uh, but I just, oh, such a letdown, such a letdown. Anyway, that's the reality. I, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to cause any controversy because I feel like if I read a book by a black author and I don't like it, like I'm kind of scared of stating my opinion because again, white passing, talking about a black author and their work and not liking it, it just kind of seems wrong. But again i'm talking about my enjoyment here and i didn't enjoy it I, I i'm not saying it was badly written again i am not a literary what's that called critic <laughs> i'm not a I'm not, I'm not a literary critic you know but for my taste and my liking i did not enjoy that book one little bit so i'm sorry then i read uh ghostly echoes by william ritter which is book number two number no i'm sorry it's book number three in the uh jacoby series and i absolutely love this book i can't tell you much again this is sherlock holmes meets supernatural and i love the character growth in this book along with i also read the dire king and if you saw my instagram 
I was sobbing my eyes out at the end of The Dire King. I was like, I, 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 it, it did that thing, that trope that I didn't like in Binti, but I think it did it in a way where it wasn't so foreshadowed and also it made sense within the world that they live in. Like, they tell you at the beginning that this is a possibility, but you kind of ignore it because there are other things going on. And then when it happens, it's actually a surprise. Like, it's a surprise. It's not like, yeah, you're gonna do that because you gotta cop out of it. It was more like, wow, this is really surprising. It was so good. I really enjoyed both um, uh, you, the Dire King and Ghostly Egos. So um, if you have a chance to pick up the series, I'm actually gonna pick up the, the series in physical form because I loved it that much. Then I read White Rage, The Unspoken Truth of Our Racial Divide by Carol Anderson. And I absolutely love this book. I think it fills in a lot of empty spaces from things that we are not taught in school. I went to the United States in school and I think it also opens your eyes a lot to why shit is like it is today you know um, I really thought this was a very informative book and I would recommend everybody pick it up okay my camera is flashing at me so I'm just gonna tell you that the last two books I read where are they are Record of a Space Porn View and uh, A Closed and Common Orbit. I'm going to link up here my favorite books of the year so far and both of these books are on it. So <laughs> basically, I loved these books. This one is, uh, they follow different characters within the same universe and this one features a amazing female female romance and one thing I haven't said about this one is that it features a male prostitute who whose work is to be a prostitute like he goes to school for this and it's not like a big deal it's his work and it's a something that people really respect about him and i thought that, that was so cool and there are just female prostitutes and i don't know this book is amazing but my camera is flashing at me so i'm gonna just round this up and yeah, I'll link up in the cards the videos that talk more about these books. And for now, I bid you adieu. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Remember, I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays if time allows, if time allows, and if I have time to edit. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for coming, guys. And I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye, guys.